launched, you may say, or you know, has been worked upon in the last two decades only. And why that is the case is uh, I will set the scene for you in uh, the next few minutes. And of course, we'll talk about its relevance in India. These are my disclosures. So, um, so far it has been, you know, anti-glaucoma medications. I will keep, keep calling it AGM. This is how it has been the backbone of glaucoma management, but we all know, and there is also uh, published evidence that greater than 40% of patients start needing more than two medications after the you know, first two years of uh, glaucoma. And uh, not many, in fact, there's only one class of drugs that can control IOP 24 hours, the rest are not. And if you miss, dosing, then obviously things get worse. And there are other limitations. There's a lifelong commitment from the part of the patient, issues of compliance and adherence, recurring cost. All this is from part of the patient, from, or from the side of the patient, and side effects. And of course, ocular surface disease. This is very, um, uh, you know, very uh, neglected aspect of anti-glaucoma medication, which is emerging as a major factor uh, limiting its use, not just uh, ocular surface disease, but also allergies. So we are very well aware of these kind of eyes. This gentleman's left eye is white only because he's had surgery in that eye. This is how it used to look before surgery. You can see follicles naked eye. The eyes are red all the time. Patients keep complaining they're watering, tearing red. Um, and it's not just the patients, it's the people around the patients also who keep complaining, why are your eyes red? And this is one of the worst kind of allergies I have seen. You can see the dermatitis there. And when you open the lid, you can see a really inflamed conjunctiva. And once the offending agent was re removed, you can see how beautifully, dramatically the whole thing clears up. So drugs are by and large safe, but they are not all 100% safe. Please remember that. The one thing good about medical approaches of glaucoma is that it utilizes the natural pathways in the eye. What do we mean by the natural pathways? Either the suprachoroidal space, you know, the prostaglandin analogs use that, or the ciliary body by reducing aqueous uh, um, uh, secretion, and of course, the trabecular meshwork, the newest group of drugs, the rock inhibitors, so to speak. But the surgical approaches so far have mainly been subconjunctival. Now, that's not a natural route at all. It's an artificial area created uh, for filtration. And um, by and large, this is what trabeculectomy is all about and also the glaucoma drainage devices because they also drain subconjunctivally. But what is the problem with a bleb forming surgery subconjunctival is that there is a very high chance of failure and failure due to fibrosis at 50 uh, there's at five years generally we quote 50 percent and of course there's chance of inf infection and other side serious threat threatening complications. We want, we all want our trabeculectomies to look like this, low, diffuse, posteriorly directed, and not just for one, two, three cases. We want it again and again and again, but is it possible? May not be possible. The blood starts failing. We all know whoever does trabeculectomy in the early post-operative period, how you have to nurse it like a baby. Uh, in the uh, early phase, 20% fail, Later, later, as I said, about 50% fail. And of course, you can also have encapsulation. And when they fail, not only does the pressure rise again, but also such blebs, the kind that you're look at, looking at here, they, they pose a life lifelong risk for infection. And depending upon which literature you're reading, it can be as high as 7%. So here is this gentleman, you know, I was very sad when I actually did his trabeculectomy, but I had to because his pressures were running in the mid 40s with five topical medications. And he was only early glaucoma. And at that time, I did not have options other than traps, except for Ologen. I was told Ologen is very safe in traps. And look what happened to this gentleman's Ologen. He developed a blebitis. He uh, was one of the fortunate ones whose um, blebitis healed and his trap was reestablished. The filtration was reestablished and he continues to enjoy good vision and good pressure now without medication. But that everyone is not that lucky. 
complications of trabeculectomy. I don't want to go into the details. I just wanted to list it for you to understand that there are numerous, you know, and there are numerous site threatening ones, as I have just said. Same with glaucoma drainage devices. They are also they also have very good potential of reducing uh, IOP, but also have the potential of very serious side effects. They form a blood not at the limbus, but at least eight to ten millimeters away from the limbus. And in these cases, the list of complications, a few, well, not a few, quite a few, which are common to all subconjunctival filters, then some which are unique to tubes of uh, the drainage implants and some which are attributable to the type of tubes you're making. So, you know, you can have tube endothelial touch, you can have blockage, you can have uh, exposure, you can have so many other things. So the limitation is huge where subconjunctival drainage is concerned. And so the search for an ideal device or a procedure goes on, which is, you know, uh, <clears throat> is safe and gives you decreased IOP. So right now, or there was, there is a gap between anti-glaucoma medication and bleb forming surgery. MIGS helps to bridge this gap. Now, this is Ike Ahmed. If you don't know him, you better know him. He's the father of MIGS. He was my mentor. He was, uh, under him is where, where I did my uh, fellowship in glaucoma. At the time I did it, MIGS was not being, being uh, it was, you know, in very nascent state, but I went back to him. And since then, the, um, you know, the bhut, jisko bolte, that is on my head. I, you know, I was sure that we, at least with our combined efforts, will be able to find something that at some point will re replace trabeculectomy with, you know, a similar kind of efficacy, but not so many side effects. So what is MIX? It's minimally invasive. It provides a lot more options, especially right now in mild to moderate glaucoma. And it can be offered to patients much earlier on in the disease. And it's usually blebless and ab interno and can be combined with cataract surgery. So what does it do now? Now we are using surgical means through natural pathways not the unnatural subconjunctival pathway. We're using the trabecular meshwork and the maximum number of devices and, and procedures are available for targeting the trabecular meshwork or the suprachoroidal space or the ciliary body. So we'll talk about them uh, one by one, but just comparing it to uh, bleb forming surgery, it reduces surgical time, complications can be offered much earlier on in the disease. As I said, can be combined with cataract surgery, cosmetically much more acceptable to the patient, much more rapid visual recovery. And what's most important is does not compromise the conjunctive. So if you have to go on and do a trabeculectomy, that can that is still possible. Flip side is at the moment, most of them only give a modest reduction in intraocular pressure. And usually it is not indicated in angle closure unless it opens up. And of course, many people will talk about the cost as well. So I, my first um, editorial in mix was as far back as 2016. And I had listed some, I have a table there, listed some procedures and now things have really gone, uh, you know, way out of that. So we, uh, you know, to try for you to understand what we mean by mix is, or classify mix is they're either trabecular meshwork or canal based, or which you can either stent or dilate, or you can uh, excise it, trabeculotomy, or you have the suprachoroidal devices, or you have the cycloablative devices, or there are a couple of the, or two, three devices which are available, which you know, are not trabeculectomy, but uh, still you have to incise the conjunctiva. They are bleb forming and you may have to use mitomycin C in them also. So uh, what are the ones that are available in India? It's basically generation one of iStent and generation two, which is iStent inject. And we have uh, most of the trabeculotomy procedures available. And of course, ECP. I have been doing ECP since 2014. Um, that is after my fellowship days. So uh, eye stent, what about the eye stent? It's a trabecular micro bypass. And what you see there is the very first eye stent being implanted 
in India, and this is now almost a year old. It was done on 15 September 2021. It's a very small device. As you can see, it is less than one millimeter in length. It has a snorkel and it has a um, open half pipe. The open half pipe goes into the, uh, to the Schlumps canal. Snorkel is the communication with the AC. And it is both FDA and CE approved. And it spares the conjunctiva, like we said. It's a mixed procedure. Don't confuse this with the Express. The Express is much larger, 2.6 millimeter. And when you uh, uh, did the Express, you could see it very clearly uh, at the slit lamp. Whereas with the uh, eye stent, you may be lucky to see it. I don't know if you can see it there in the right-hand corner because it stays in the Schlems canal and the uh, communication of the snorkel with the AC may just be visible in the bottom. The second one is G2 or generation two. It's even smaller. It's less than 0.3 millimeters. Um, G2 base or the width is less than its length. So they have introduced W where the length and the width is the same, okay? But here too, it comes preloaded and spares the conjunctiva as we know. So the basic difference between the two is how you implant it, uh, first of all. In G1 or eye stent um, alone, it is parallel to the trabecular meshwork, as you can see there, being done ex vivo. And G2 is perpendicular to the trabecular meshwork. You make a dimple and you inject. Actually, pretty simple procedures, not difficult to do. So you can see it in vivo also now. Intraoperative gonioscopy is very important, which is what you see here, the gonioscope. You see me entering through my cataract wound, approaching the trabecular meshwork, going parallel to it, and just placing the device into the Schlems canal. And a plume of blood is always good because it tells you that blood is regurgitating through the Schlems canal. And once I've cleared it with uh, viscoelastic, you can see the snorkel sitting very nicely. Now, this is your um, eye stent inject, which perpendicular, which is what I said, and you can see a little bit of microhyphema there. Uh, there you are, okay? And that is what you want to see. I'm just moving on now because we are short of time. So what does it do? Basically, it by by bypasses the site of highest resistance to aqueous outflow, which is the juxta canalicular trabecular meshwork. It's, it is uh, always advisable to place it pro close to the aqueous veins. So its positioning is very important. And this is how it increases flow through the stent and it improves facility of outflow. As a very nice, very elegant experiment done by Huang et al, who looked at angiographic studies before and after placing the ice stent. Before, there were hardly any channels open. After placing two eye stents, as you can see, the uh, dormant channels seem to have opened up. So what are the indications? You, you really need to do it in mild to moderate. Please remember when we say mild to moderate, it's not in the appearance of the disc. It is based on visual fields. It is based on Anderson's criteria, okay? And it has to be open angle, as I said. You can do it in uh, those patients who have difficulty taking medications, who have side effects, who have complications, and also who are com you know, uh, poorly compliant to AGM. Um, uh, systematic review and meta-analysis of eye stent alone. So PECO is not being done. PECO is not the confounder in this study, and they still found greater than 30% reduction at five years and reduction in medication and the need for trabeculectomy only 2.6%. So that's pretty serious evidence. What complications can you expect? If you are starting, you may have an iris endothelial stutch, of course, that will decrease with experience over under implantation. You have maneuvers to correct this. There might be stent malposition. You may have to reposition. There might be occlusion. You can either observe or do a YAG laser and you can microhyphema. You really don't see layered post-op hyphema at all with these kind of mixed procedures. And of course, you might need a filtration surgery much later on. So I'm presenting to you my uh, first few eye stent that I have done, follow up more than six months now, all combined with cataract surgery, all primary open angle glaucoma. And you can see... <laughs> 
hello uh, someone from from clarinet is here can you please mute the yes audience? yes now already muted dr hassan thank you yeah. pre op about 22 post op 16 pre op meds four reduced to 0.5 so that's a whopping number close to 80 5 90% of reduction of medication with reduction of intraocular pressure as well so far i have had one failure and we cannot expect any procedure in glaucoma to be to give you 100% success please please be aware of that so hydrus is an, yet another trabecular uh, bypass but not a micro bypass because it's rather large it's about um yeah, size of a, a crescent shaped micro stent it's about 8 mm and uh still not available in india i just show you a brief video that i have of ikes and uh, he very kindly lends all this to his previous fellows the hydrus microstent is so i won't uh, play uh, play the full thing i will just get you so intraoperative gonioscopy very very important at at high magnification then with the uh, injector you have to get pierce the posterior trabecular meshwork and get into the schlems canal once you are there you release the hydrus just like that slowly into the you will see it coming in a minute there we are all right it's just released slowly so that it sits in the schlems canal and behaves like a intracanalicular scaffold there we are that's how Within it the canal. sits sits in the canal okay and this of course as i said is currently not available in india then we have the um the next group of uh, devices called the omni or the uh, eye track omni is ab interno ab externo is eye track i'm not going to talk about it because you do have to create flaps uh, scler scler uh, scleral flaps for it so we have uh, canaloplasty uh, with through which you can do uh, you know gonioscopy assisted transluminal trabecular lotomy so here you can do 360 degrees you can either dilate it or you can even cut cut through it so it comes preloaded that catheter comes preloaded in a device and you can introduce it into the uh, schlems canal 360 degrees after a while it actually becomes a blind procedure you cannot see it going through 360 degrees uh, unless the tip is lighted so when the tip is lighted it's usually an external procedure anyway the indications are open angle glaucoma congenital glaucoma as well and complications fair amount false passage dm detachment very significant high femur fibrosis and pass so the um the developing world's answer to uh, an omni device say for instance or a, or a gat catheter micro catheter is a suture gat where you can use proline and um uh, introduce it into the schlems canal 360 degree and then rip it uh pull it through and rip it apart so here we have i don't do gat anymore so i don't have a good video of mine i have borrowed it from dr swati upadhyay of arvind in pondicherry i will actually turn it forward you have to uh, blunt the tip first then you um she likes to do it prior to cataract surgery she doesn't do it after and once you've introduced it into the eye you then place the lens and you make a goniotomy small one with an mvr blade and then you introduce the uh, suture into the schlems canal once you have done this after this it is blind you don't know where it is going so the false passage is very high dm detachment can also occur until it is visible again at the other end as you can see now once it is seen there she holds that or when you do a suture gat that's what you do you hold that and then you rip you hold the one the suture that is outside uh, your paracentesis sorry and then you rip it through there sorry you rip it through just like that okay that is what gat is uh, intraoperatively like i said you can uh, have several complications especially iris endothelial or lens touch which decreases with experience you may fail to cannulate 360 degree that happens quite often for actually false passage you can have dm detachment and early post operative period like i said high femur very very significant up to 36% and post operative you can have fibrosis pass formation and need for gfs at least one paper has said up to 20%
Anyway, then the other uh, that is available is trabectome. This is also a de-roofing of the inner wall of the Schlems canal with electrocautery. Now, I won't go into details, but it comes with a handpiece and a footplate. The handpiece has a footplate. I'll just play a video. You'll just have an idea. Again, similar kind of position where you make a small incision, you use intraoperative gonioscopy, and this is the trabectome tip with the foot plate. The foot plate prevents thermal ablation of the uh, uh, other tissue uh, uh, underlying, okay? So it's introduced in the AC, then you, re you reposition your gonioscope, and then you can do you uh, ablation first, counterclockwise, like this, like this is being done right now. And then you can go back to where you started and do clockwise. So you cover about 90 to 120 degrees, whatever your choice is, okay? And then you wash out the viscoelastin, right? What are the complications? Again, a little bit of high femur, transient rise in IOP, initial results. You can get about 30 to 40% reduction in the short term does not compromise future surgery. As we know, most of these ab internal MIGs do not compromise future surgery. So what about the hook dual blade, which has only recently uh, uh, been granted regulatory approvals in, in India. This also de-roofs the Schlems canal and it does so with a specialized blade, which has a tip, which has a ramp and which has um, um, you know, two cutting blades, basically. Here in this particular case, this I did, I think, as far back as 2014 or 15. Um, and a very pigmented, you know, you ca really cannot see the unroof Schlems canal. But how do I know? I have picked the trabecular mess work. You can see that I can aspirate it away. All right, you can actually get the same effect with a bent needle too. So I this is now my preferred way of doing... Uh, excisional trabeculotomy or goniectomy, whatever you may call it. There are some very confusing terminologies out there. You can see how easily you can just get it into your Schlems canal and just watch my tip. You can see the excised trabecular meshwork come away with my tip. It's as simple as that. So my uh, first few cases of bang, again, once I have more than six weeks, sorry, six months, um, uh, follow up here, they, it was more or less controlled on two drugs after um, from 18, pressure reduced to 14 and drugs zero. So far, I have not had to pray, put any patient back on medication. But please remember in this particular this series, I have very few drugs. So they are really mild to moderate. They are not very, uh, not, uh, you know, more moderates. Le yeah, they are less moderates, um, more milds in there. And then we have ECP. ECP is something, like I said, I've been doing for years and years. And I've been doing this with very good results, I have to say. It is a diode laser. It's the original mix, described as far back as 1992. It can be used irrespective of angle status. So I like to use it in angle closure quite a bit. And I'll show you why. And you use less than one-fourth the power of transcleral uh, delivery and you can use it in any type of glaucoma really. Only disadvantages, it requires a sterile environment. Uh, you can do standalone or you can do uh, with cataract surgery. Uh, if you do pars plana, of course you need a limited vitrectomy. And this is the sum total of complications I have seen with ECP in my cohort. CME, fibrin, CME could have been cataract also, a little bit of fibrinous reaction and high femur. I use this in angle closure, I use a modification called endocycloplasty, which is basically uh, ablating the tip of the uh, ciliary process. So here you can see that the, the two ciliary processes are the same height. And once I have ablated it, you can see the height has decreased. Okay, so just a brief video on how I do phaco endocycloplasty. I do this in primary angle closure glaucoma. So here in this case, uh, I put an intraoperative gonioscope on and angle is closed. So I do my cataract first. You don't really need to see the cataract. Then once the cataract is done, you put cohesive viscoelastic in the sulcus. Once you have done that, you set up your fake uh, ECP and you put in the uh, 
ACP probe in the sulcus, as, as you can see there, behind the iris. Once you have done that, you will visualize the ciliary processes. And once you visualize the ciliary processes, you can ablate them. And as you can see, like I told you, it shrinks away from the angle. So if I ablate the tip, it shrinks away from the angle. Once it does, does that, I bring it back into the AC to view the angle. And in this particular case, where the angle was closed, I showed you in the beginning, you can see that the angle has opened up. Barring one clock hour of pass, the rest of the inferior angle has opened up. It's almost like magic. Uh, and I love it. I My first... Um, uh, publication on this was just in angle closure, where it was retrospective, and I found complete success 75% at one and a half years. And the it was overwhelmingly safe, only two eyes needed trab after that. Then I uh, did a randomized control trial, I did it in uh, mild, not mild, moderate to severe glaucomas, a, and I compared it with phaco trabeculectomy. I did a phaco ECP, versus FACO-TRAB. And uh, in both groups, I found complete success 75%. So what was it that separated the two? It was the number of side effects and complications and the interventions. It was much, much, much less in the FACO-ECPL group. And now uh, uh, there's a third uh, publication which is actually pending, but I'd like to show it to you because it's, um, you may ask the question, why not FACO alone in angle closure? Why you want to do more, you know, um, if ECP with it? So both the groups were very well uh, matched, as you can see there. Uh, intraocular pressure reduced in both, but you can see in PE, phacoendocytoplasty, it was reduced much more significantly. So was the number of medications. So what I found was twice the amount of medications were reduced and twice the amount of uh, IOP was reduced. Complete success, more than 77%. But what about the complications? In phaco alone group, I got more aqueous misdirection. These eyes are prone to misdirection. So when we do ECP, it deepens the angle very nicely. So I have done this in acute angle closure also. And all eyes at the moment are uh, under control. You can see in this particular lady, uh, bilateral acute angle closure prior at presentation, her AC depth. This is after PI, her AC depth. And lastly, this is after FACO ECP, her uh, AC depth. So the key points that I would like to give you involving PE in angle closure is that complete success in three studies was about 75%. It is superior to FACO alone, non-inferior to TRAP. There are no side-threatening complications that I have faced so far. Angle closure eyes are at risk of aqueous misdirection, but that does not happen in FACO endocycloplasty because it helps to deepen and stabilize the anterior chamber depth. Then, of course, you have this uh, I stand supra and the mini jet. These are suprachoroidal devices. I will not go into the details. They're not available in India, but basically they are placed in the suprachoroidal space. Cypass was one such device which has been withdrawn voluntarily because it uh, showed a significant increase in endothelial cell loss. This was what a Cypass looked like. All right. Then uh, we have the Zen Mix Plus. Zen is a gelatin stent, about six millimeter, which you introduce ab internal as well as ab external. So there you have both, both ways of doing it. So this is mix plus because you're reaching the conjunctiva. A brief, brief video Go here Jason. Uh, from Ike again goes in. That is the injector. Once you get into the angle, sorry, there's a little fogging there. Okay. And he pushes the gel stent, as you can see. And immediately you see a bleb formation. Just a minute. Yeah, the needle comes up. And as soon as you uh, irrigate, you find a bleb formation locally. From the okay. anterior so chamber to the subconjunctival space, bleb. develops into a couple of marks. Um, and then Presoflow, basically, it is a shunt. It's eight millimeter shunt, which has to be introduced from the conjunctival end through a scleral canal into the AC. This is the only one that is being uh, studied 
versus a trabeculectomy. And it's an ab external approach. So then we come to the last part where, what is the relevance of MIGS in India? Basically the Indian scenario, we're all aware of it. This poor and variable availability of specialized healthcare, late access and presentation, the increased occurrence of angle closure, and of course, affordability. But we all have and seen a significant proportion of ocular hypertensives and early glaucoma who, when they've had significant cataract, we've only done FACO for them. Such patients are compelled to use AGM lifelong. These patients can be combined with MIGS because it reduces IOP by 20 to 30% and helps to minimize use of AGM. And I cannot stress any less why you need reduction of AGM because you have reduced chance of OST, reduced chance of allergy, improved compliance, adherence, and persistence. And of course, from the patient's point of view, improved quality of life. The mix available in India, as you all know, limited availability, I've told you, procedures that are available are for partial de-roofing of Schlem's canal, the trabectum, the KDB, and the bang. Procedures for 360-degree ab internal trabeculotomy is the suture gap, eye stent, eye stent inject, and of course, cyclophotocoagulation. All the procedures that we have talked about other than cyclophotocoagulation are dependent on an open angle, not so with endoscopic cyclophotocoagulation. Where all these are concerned, as you can see, they are there is variable amount of uh, efficacy, but there is efficacy, no doubt, reduction of uh, anti-glaucoma medication also. By and large, they are very safe. And all of these procedures that are currently available in India do not breach the conjunctiva. Of course, cost can be an issue. So very few devices available in India compared to Western counterparts. Mostly the cheaper versions of devices which are available abroad, like we do a suture cat rather than a device cat, or we, uh, instead of doing, um, yeah, you know, used to be doing KDB, we do a bang, now KDB is available. Mind you, KB, KDB is a little bit more expensive and it's not suitable. Please remember, not suit mix are not suitable for advanced disease, but, uh, and most are not suitable for sinical angle closure disease anyway. And unfortunately, very little training is in, imparted for intraoperative gonioscopy. And in fact, uh, we have done studies. Uh, we have shown that even clinic gonioscopy, clinic based gonioscopy is very sparsely done in India and of course can be costly. So mix are ab internal, minimally traumatic. It fills the void between medical management and more invasive traditional surgeries, mostly in, indicated in open angle, mild to moderate. ECP is the only one which you can use irrespective of angle status. And these are indicated earlier on in the disease and they are safe and efficacious when they are used in appropriate indications only. It is not competing with TRAP, please remember. Its efficacy is not being pitted against TRAP, okay? However, MIGs are very patient-centric. Why? Because they're safer, lesser number of post-operative visits, early visual rehabilitation, reduction of anti-glaucoma medication, and cost is, being, is the only limiting factor. But if cost were the only limiting factor, then there would be no cardiac stents put in India. There would be no multifocals, trifocals being put in India. Femto cataract would not have been done in India. So I rest my case. Thank you. I'm really sorry if I have overshot. Okay. Thank you. It was an extensive presentation, ma'am. And I'm sure, just like me, a lot of people might have a lot of questions. I'll just quickly ask one, which is uh, me being a cataract and a refractive uh, surgeon. Ma'am, I'm solely a cataract and refractive uh, practitioner. But listening to your talk, it definitely is a good uh, way to give our patients a broader treatment prospects. So if a cataract and refractive surgeon has to start MIGS, maybe an eye stent, um, how steep is the learning curve and how do we go about it? it? The learning curve is not steep for the procedure per se. The learning curve is steep for intraoperative gonioscopy at high magnification with proper patient positioning. That is the, that is the learning curve. And also you cannot not do a, a, a gonioscopy in a clinic and, you know, assume that the patient is open, assume that the angle, you know, 
is absolutely fine and then find on table that things are not not that is not the case so you have to start doing gonioscopy in clinics that's first second you can start positioning the patient uh, you know, I would have talked about it if there was time, but obviously due to a shortage of time, that is not possible. I would have shown, given you tips of how to start, but basically you have to start learning how to position the patient away from you 30 degrees and the microscope towards you 30 degrees minimum. That's how you visualize the angle much better at, at high magnification. So first you have to get used to that. You can do that after your cataracts. First few, five to 10 cataracts. If you're comfortable with that, then the next step is to use a needle. Just prick the, uh, or use a Sinsky, just prick the trabecular meshwork, get the feel of it. And then start with bang. In bang, you have nothing to lose. You have a needle, doesn't cost anything. And even if you don't manage to get, get it into, into the uh, Schlems canal, unroof the Schlems canal, no harm done. You're not using a device which is very expensive. And neither are you know you promising. You should not be promising the patient more than what you can deliver. That's for sure. Ma'am, we have spoken so much about MIGS. Uh, I would yeah. like to know uh, what are your views about MIGS in pediatric glaucoma patients? Yeah. Uh, uh, a difficult topic there. Um, in children, um, because they have, you know, this very dysgenetic, we are, we're talking about primary congenital glaucoma now. I'm not talking about, you know, the very difficult secondary glaucomas, all right? But in primary congenital glaucoma, because you have this very um, uh, dysgenetic trabecular meshwork, you have iris processes everywhere. If the cornea is clear, really your uh, treatment of choice should be a goniotomy. Ex, you know, in children, we do incisional goniotomy. You can try an excisional goniotomy as well. Incisional go goniotomy is done with a MVR blade. Excisional is done with a bent needle. You can definitely try that, you know. Um, but if the cornea is not clear, which is really the majority of the cases that we see, especially with children, um, a, the, the best thing to do is, you know, a, a trap and trap. If cornea is clear and you are comfortable with doing a GAT, GAT may be a procedure of choice in primary congenital glaucoma, I feel. I have tried it in primary congenital glaucoma, but, uh, you know, that's another story. I don't want to uh, bother you guys here. Okay, ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, we do have uh, one question from our audience, Dr. Shaina. Uh, she wants to know the cleft that we see post bang or KDB or trabectome. Do you see it in all your cases? No, you don't actually see it in all cases. Um, I would say uh, I see it in about seventy to eighty percent cases, but. Uh, the, the, the data I presented in every single case, the pressure was controlled and is still controlled. So even if I'm not seeing the cleft on table, I have seen the cleft. Yes. I have not given up un until I have seen the Schlems canal being derailed. That's for sure. Undoubtedly. But for some reason, I think some pigment, uh, if, deposition takes place there you don't see a clear cleft in in about 15 to 20 percent cases i have i have uh, actually reviewed quite a few papers on uh, on uh, you know angle procedures and uh, this is what this is what is coming through as well from other authors that uh, you know about 15 to 20 percent cleft is not visible okay ma'am so we'll take uh, a, a few other questions after the debate ma'am uh, so I would like to invite Dr. Amit uh, to please start his presentation. Is my slide visible? Yes, Dr. Amit. Uh, thank you, Yossi, for this opportunity. And uh, thank you, Anita, ma'am. You have made my uh, life very easy. Uh, almost covered everything about eye stand. Uh, uh, why is it the mix of choice for me? I'll be uh, presenting that. 
So like ma'am has already told, there's a huge gap between the patients who are medically managed and there are a lot of problems with medical management, uh, stressed on uh, ocular surface disorder. So MIGS has the potential to uh, successfully and effectively and safely fill this gap between the medically managed uh, huge population that we have and the patients who finally land up with a trabeculectomy or a tube surgery. Again, I'm not going to go into much details of uh, this. Ma'am has already covered all this, uh, but the same uh, uh, article by uh, Dr. Ike Emmer, he has told that, again, uh, these minimally or micro-invasive glaucoma surgeries are not here to replace trabeculectomy or glaucoma drainage devices. So the advantages, uh, minimally invasive, suture-less, short surgical time, fast recovery, no major complications and preserves the conjunctiva for future. Ma'am has already uh, talked about this. Uh, Indian options are manual or implants, and the only two implants that are available right now are the eye stent and the eye stent inject. So the eye stent is uh, a very very small device, the smallest uh, medically uh, medical device that has uh, that has been implanted in the human body. And of course, it goes in the trabecular meshwork and restores the natural physiological outflow. It's, it's made up of uh, titanium and heparin coated titanium. And uh, patients who have eye stent can undergo an MRI as well. It's not an issue. So indications uh, like ma'am has already covered, uh, mild to moderate glaucomas. These are uh, what I'm doing right now. Uh, some people, uh, some surgeons may have different indications, but this is probably the uh, most generalized and uh, widely accepted indications for uh, doing an eye stint. Mild to moderate glaucomas who are undergoing cataract surgery uh, with open angles, of course, PXF and PDS are okay. Patients preferably on multiple medications so that we can actually decrease the number of medications. Patients who are allergic to medications or patients who are contraindicated to uh, AGMs are uh, who are non-compliant to AGMs. Uh, that's a huge, huge population that we have. And uh, patients who are keen on getting glaucoma surgery along with their cataract surgeries. So this is a safe, safe method that we can do and uh, give them that option. Contraindications, I don't do it in uh, severe and advanced glaucomas, visual fields, that is uh, angle closure uh, uh, cases, especially with extensive pass. Secondary glaucomas, neovascular, uveitic, for obvious reasons, I'm not going to touch those uh, with the eye stint. Extremely high IOP where we want a 50, 60 or 70% IOP reduction and we're not going to do a mix. They're uh, better off uh, with the trabeculectomy. Angle recession, I, uh, I've not tried and I'm, I'm very reluctant in doing that. And pediatric glaucomas, like ma'am has already told, what we can do. But eye stent right now is not a good option there. Uh, just one small case, uh, a 57 year old male came with open angle, uh, primary open angle glaucomas diagnosed elsewhere on brimonidine, timolol, an asthmatic and a alcoholic complaints of diminution of vision since three months, redness, itching, watering, and excoriation of the lower lid skin since past 10 days. Uh, on examination, he had severe conjunctival papillary reaction, uh, similar to what ma'am showed there, uh, he had an NS2 PSE cataract for which I think this that was the cause of the diminution of vision. Intraocular pressures of 22, 24 mmHg. This showed uh, early inferior rim notch and perimetry gave a corresponding superior nasal step. So the impression was a middle-aged, significant cataract, open angle glaucoma, mild visual field loss, allergic to brimonidine and timolol is contraindicated. So what would have I done uh, uh, before the advent of MIGS? Probably a year back. Uh, yeah, probably I would have done a, only a FACO seeing that it's a mild glaucoma and uh, I would have maintained him on PG analogs, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and probably because he's an alcoholic, he would not, uh, uh, he would miss his nighttime doses frequently, probably would have uh, progressed to uh, a, a more severe glaucoma and would have landed up in a, with a trap later on after a few years or more uh, aggressive uh, surgeons would have done a FACO trap to begin with. But what we did now was uh, we stopped its brimonidine timolol, of course, uh, gave him lubricants and chloromethylone for five days. We wanted to operate, that's why, or else we could have done with lubricants as well. 
started brinzolamide three times in a day and advised FACO ice tent. A small video, I would quickly uh, go through it. This is the eye prism from uh, Glaucos. Again, uh, no financial disclosures. Uh, but this is the eye prism SX from Glaucos. It's a disposable lens. You can see uh, the angles very beautifully with this. It's very easy to use and um, very lightweight. You can just leave it there if you want. Don't have to even hold it thoroughly. This is the eye stent. Uh, this uh, is very easy and uh, a simple procedure. You can uh, just go off a little uh, with, with one very high magnification like ma'am showed. Uh, just have to pierce the trapezoidal meshwork and then straighten the uh, injector. It comes with a hook, uh, a finger-like uh, hooks that, that holds the injector. And when you release the uh, button, it releases the ice. And we can actually go and re-hold the high stint and then place it uh, in another place if we want. Uh, this is how uh, the blood uh, comes from the high stint. That's a good sign, like ma'am told. Uh, it means that you have uh, placed it correctly. You can see such a easy method, such a, and you can see the ice strength beautifully there. So the results, this is, this is the first post-operative day. We don't get a uh, fake or trabeculectomy is uh, first post-op day like this, right? But this was first post-operative day. You can see uh, uh, the eye strength here, uh, just a few drops of blood uh, staining there. You can see a magnified view. Again, like ma'am told, this had uh, this patient had a translucent kind of a limbus and we could see the eye strength through it. And post-operative two months, the patient's BCV is 6, 6, N6 and uh, pressures of 14, 16 without any glaucoma medication. Uh, this is how it looks uh, post-operatively in gonioscopy. Uh, Ma'am has already gone through this. I'm not going to go through. And eye strand inject is even easier to implant, like Ma'am told. Uh, it's a button-like uh, implant that goes even easier. So uh, eye strand has a proven safety and efficacy, and it's been there since many years now, more than 15 years. More than 10 lakh patients have been implanted with an eye strand, and uh, more than 300 articles in peer-reviewed journals. So. Uh, I'm not going to again go into too much details here. Uh, the pivotal trial uh, study met with all effectiveness endpoints, high safety profile, similar to cataract surgery alone. So that's the amount of safety that we can assure to the patient, right? 31% uh, reduction from the baseline in intraocular pressures, and most of the patients were off medications. Uh, and, and, and this is four years follow of 46% IOP reduction. This is actually uh, a little uh, too good to believe something something like that. But yeah, this is there in, in after four years. And you look at the, uh, the maintenance, it, it has maintained over so many years now, the intraocular pressure reduction and 95% were med free. Uh, comparing with uh, uh, PG analogs, 77% uh, of treatment success as compared to PG analogs alone. Uh, and five-year follow-up studies also have shown maintenance of intraocular pressure and maintenance of medical uh, medication reduction over a long period of time. That's the most important point here. Maintenance, in, uh, decrease in intraocular pressure, decrease in number of medications, but over a long period of time. So I stand inject, uh, uh, again, uh, there is uh, no uh, risk of increased risk of endothelial cell loss uh, like we have with other implants. Uh, and, and no reports of flat ACs, coronal hemorrhage, cyclodialysis, hypotony, hypotony maculopathy. Stent dislocation also is very, very uncommon, significant hyphema. Again, it's not there as compared to the other manual surgeries uh, and, and corneal decompensation uh, has not been reported. So coming on to the main topic of the debate, uh, why eye strength is better than say a GAT or a, uh, uh, other manual surgeries because it is less invasive. We are only using 1% of the trabecular meshwork. So it's a true microinvasive uh, glaucoma surgery instead of uh, a, a GAD, which 
in which we are opening 360 degrees of the trabecular meshwork, this actually is a, a microinvasive surgery. Uh, and, and trabecular meshwork is spared for future interventions and future medications uh, in these mild to moderate cases. We know uh, we are not promising uh, any of our mixed patients that you'll be uh, medication free for lifelong, right? Uh, in fact, not even our trap patients. So we know that these patients would require medications in the future. And we don't know what long term uh, happens to these trabecular meshwork after a 360 degree trabeculotomy or boniectomy. What, what uh, happens, uh, microscopic scarring, how is it, uh, is it affecting it? And most of our regimes, they act on increasing the trabecular outflow, right? And in fact, future medications also would uh, probably target this trabecular outflow. And we don't know how they are going to get affected on, on these damaged trabecular meshwork with GAD procedures. Uh, iStent has a global experience of more than 10 lakh patients, a million patients. Uh, whereas we don't have much data on, on manual mix surgery. Uh, then the learning curve in manual surgery is very, especially suture GAD. I've done it. Uh, believe me, it's not as easy as, as uh, it looks in the videos uh, and, and surgical times. Sometimes it crosses my trap time also. I can do a trap probably in 15 minutes and, and this took uh, longer. So are we actually doing a mix? Uh, Post-surgical management, again, it's not smooth. Like ma'am told, uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, chances of hyphema, then inflammation is, again, uh, more than what you get in eye stent. And there have been studies uh, in, in trap failure patients also, but I have not done it. I'm not going to recommend it here, but still, that's an, probably an advantage. Coming on to the point of cost, I think that's the main uh, weapon that Dr. Prasanna would have against me. Uh, but see, majority of insurance companies would compensate for the implant. I've done six implants now. And uh, just one patient paid in cash, rest all their companies, their insurance companies compensated for the implant. So again, the cost to the uh, patient is not very high always. KDB, ITRAC, and they are, they are recurrent costs, right? Machine cost, again, will not be covered by insurance. It's the implants that will be covered. And uh, one point is when we can do premium IELTS, we can do femtocataracts just to improve, say, uh, a patient's intermediate vision. We, uh, instead of giving uh, uh, probably a, uh, an eye hands uh, like IOL, we give them trifocal lenses, right? Just to improve their intermediate or a near vision uh, a little more. And why not this vision saving device, right? We know that uh, eye stent has the potential to save a lot of patients from going into severe advanced glaucomas or land up with TRAB in the future, right? So this device should, the cost should not matter here, right? So it's, it's a vision saving device. It's, and in and, and FLAX, what we are doing with just, uh, so that our uh, rexus is a little more uh, rounder, our FACO time and a FACO energy that is used is a little bit lesser. We uh, ask a premium of 30, 40, even more thousand rupees, right? So why not uh, an implant which has the potential to save the vision over a long period of time as compared to a manual surgery, which we don't know what will happen after a few years. Right? So just the take home message is again, MIGS is not an alternative to uh, filtration surgery. And there's a huge population of mild to moderate glaucoma patients who are progressing in spite of medical management. So MIGS can stop them from progressing into severe and advanced glaucomas. It can prevent majority of these patients to land up with TRAB. Eye stent, eye stent inject are the only implants that are available in India. They're the safest, time-tested, long-lasting, and easiest mix to do. Cost of the implant, I understand it needs to decrease, but again, it should not matter too much here. Mix has created a paradigm shift in management of glaucoma worldwide, and it's high time that we practice it in India. Again, ma'am's, uh, we congratulate ma'am on the first eye stent in India, the first eye stent in Gujarat that was done at my center. Thank you so much.
great presentation, Dr. Ramit. Uh, I hope Dr. Prasanna gives you a very strong fight. Uh, so I now request Dr. Prasanna to please share his screen. Until yeah. that time, uh, Dr. Amit, uh, would you like to answer this? Is iStent MRI compatible? This question is from Dr. Alka. Yeah, it is MRI compatible, and we uh, the iStent comes with a card also in the in the box, which uh, tells that uh, I've been uh, implanted with an iStent and uh, uh, MRI. I think one point five three or up to seven Tesla can be done. Uh, it comes with a card also, which the patient can show uh, before he gets an MRI if there, there are questions asked. Okay, so uh, Dr. Prasanna, yeah. are you ready for the fight? <laughs> I hope uh, I, I'm the one person standing between sleep and uh, the audience, I suppose. But, but anyway, but I, I'm sure with your energy, you'll give a strong fight to Amit. I'm very yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. We'll make it more interesting and uh, I'll try to finish uh, as soon as possible. And uh, I congratulate uh, ma'am for the first implant in India and Amit for the first implant in Gujarat. So, I'm not, uh, to start off in a different way, I, I would like to join you guys soon. I have not yet implanted one, but I am uh, undergoing my training for uh, doing it and uh, to implant the first in uh, my locality. But yeah, we have to really uh, acknowledge uh, and uh, go forward and uh, that's the right way to go. But for uh, the debate's sake and uh, let us see the other side of it as well. And uh, thanks to uh, Yosi uh, and uh, Aarti uh, and Nandini for giving me this opportunity to be here and uh, have this debate with the uh, Amit, Pand Amit Pandey and uh, being moderated by uh, Vanita ma'am. So my journey uh, started in MIGS uh, from the time I visited uh, Melbourne in uh, 2019. I think this was uh, the last uh, physical conference that really revolutionized my way of thinking uh, why MIGS because I thought trap if not tube uh, I think that's it but then uh, and uh, through, go through these articles by ma'am, uh, the recent one in Kerala Journal of Ophthalmology, where ma'am has covered on uh, ushering in the era of MIGS in India. And I also followed ma'am's work in advances in glaucoma surgery in Oman Journal of Ophthalmology, which ma'am was also telling the one that she did in 2016. And uh, so these are all, and the other one in IJO, uh, which was in 2022. So these are all some of the references that I've used for today's uh, debate. And these are my other references from other authors as well. Point one is reality. Yeah, reality is limited availability of MAGS devices. Actually, this point I have taken from Vanita Ma'am's one of Vanita Ma'am's article in Kerala Journal, where uh, the reality point is targeting the trabecular meshwork to unroof the Schlem's scandal. So whatever said and done today, uh, the low cost version such as the proline suture GAT or whether you want to compare it with an Omni or with the catheter suture GAT, ultimately it comes down to a point where people choose proline. That's where is the ground reality and the bent uh, needle ab interno boniectomy, the bank or the KDB. KDB is costly and uh, after today's lecture from ma'am, I understood that it has got regulatory approval. So when I was going through Ma'am's KJO article in 2022, it was it was that it was not yet got the approval. So it was something new that I learned today that KDB also got approval. In 2019, I had a wet lab course in uh, Australia, Melbourne, where I have used the KDB on the the eyes that they gave, and they also told it is not approved yet in India. So and it's recently approved. So whatever said and done, what is the reality? That is one point that I want to put. The second point is the dismissive mindset. So a lot of uh, the general practitioners as well as the glaucoma practitioners, the mindset is quite dismissive. It's very difficult. Yeah, I, as I told, I am willing to tra transform myself into uh, eye strength. That's what I'm trying to take my learning forward. I'm uh, getting my training with glaucos. But the dismissive mindset of the ophthalmologist, you won't be uh, amazed because People who have not performed a single procedure of MIGS, they are dismissing it. If it's people who have performed a procedure and they are they have burned their hands, well and truly fine. But people who have not performed and they are dismissing it, how are we going to really help them in going forward with an eye stand? That is one. And that is where I felt this is sound really logical because I felt when we start with a gap, 
our suture get uh, from Davinder Grover and Ronald, it really helps us in a way that, okay, at least the investment is not that great. As uh, Vanita Ma'am was pointing out, it is not the procedure, but rather the direct gonioscopy, which really matters. So at least we say that it's only $4. Start off with direct gonioscopy with a proline suture. And then once they are familiarized with the direct gonioscopy, because that is really the hurdle, and then we can slowly take them into eye stent. I feel this is a roadmap forward rather than jumping from direct gonioscopy into eye stent, go through GAT and then upgrade yourself through eye stent because of the cost factor and as well as the learning curve is for the direct gonioscopy and not for the GAT or the eye stent. I'll skip yeah. this video. We had a lot of information today. And uh, it's a safe procedure, less invasive. We saw so many other things. It doesn't violate the conjunctiva. And the $4, that's the selling point here. So whatever said and done for a general ophthalmologist tomorrow, we can say that you can undergo your claim. So personally, the difficulty that I'm facing is patients also have their own way of calculating claims that they don't want to invest in this, whatever said and done, flax and other things. They feel ground reality when they have another alternative like an IOP lowering medication or a trabeculectomy, it's very difficult to convince them where, okay, when we start off to convert it, we go through GAT and that may really work out because of the cost effective nature. And the point number four is whatever complications that happens with a GAT or with a bank, it's very self-limiting as ma'am pointed out in her study where the success rate was very good and it was close to zero if I'm not wrong, uh, Vanita ma'am study, which she just pointed out recently. So these data show that it's very effective. On the other side, there is a limitation. The limitation being trabeculectomy gets the IOP as low as 10, but the GAT does not get it. But on having said that, surgeons, we realize that not every patient needs an IOP as low as 10. So we do have the mild to moderate category where we can choose. Point five, you can see FACO GAT and FACO I stent. The conclusion here, showed a significant reduction. The FACO eye stent appears to have a higher safety profile, but the FACO GAT has a higher reduction is what this one particular study uh, is doing. But there are other studies likewise also. It's all too early to call the shots because it's all one year follow-up and so on. I think with time, with five years, 10 years, we'll have a much better picture. But this is this one point was very eye-catchy and uh, this was one of the recent studies by Hamze et al. And the prognosing factors, again, uh, in this study, you can see GAT is also promising. And it has a positive effect when it is combined with the cataract surgery, as uh, Ma'am was also pointing out in a chat box, that when we do the cataract, the chamber deepens, the trabecular measure can be well visualized. And that tends to have a more positive effect. So that thing is there. I'll skip all these. I'll just go to my points. Point six is what data shows. Data shows that primary glaucoma or secondary open angle glaucoma, the IOP reduction is good. The IOP decreases 11 millimeters in PIVO-AG and 11.9 millimeters in a secondary open angle glaucoma. So data points out that it's, it's good. We can all try it out. And uh, refractory glaucoma or in other words, people who have already underwent a incisional glaucoma surgery. Can we do it for them? Yes who have underwent trabeculectomy, who have underwent GDD or a trabectome or a endocyclophotocoagulation, a study has been done and the IOP dropped from 25 to 15 millimeters and the medication usage dropped from 3 to 2. The traditional thinking was that we can't really think of doing this because the patient with a previous trabeculectomy or a tube shunt, he tends to have a deranged natural drainage system, but that is not the case. This group of study proved otherwise. And then you can see that despite the fact of the failed trabeculectomy, this one point here is very important where prior tube group did a little better than a prior trabeculectomy group. So I'll just go to only my points. Point six, I have just 10 points. I'll just take you through. Point six is about the primary congenital glaucoma group and the JOAG group. Yes, in 2015, a uh, study has shown that it can be done. It's a retrospective study. It do uh, it does add as its limitations, but it is giving hope that GAT works very well there also. 27 to 14 millimeters, there seems to be a tremendous drop. Medication 2.6 to 0.86. That's the data there. And this is the original cohort study by 
uh, Dr. Grover et al. from the time he started doing that. And uh, they have done all sort of patients, different permutations and combinations. Patients with PVOAG, PVOAG with FECO and GAT, only pseudophagic patients, SOAG patients, the permutations and combinations. And uh, there seems to be good results, which are quite promising. One, again, the complication part of it, majority have IFEMA, few had, uh, one had a coronal detachment, but the others were all self-limiting in nature. So the idea is, I think we can start with it. And choosing the patients right, how sick the eyes are, just that really matters. See, the eye stent trial that came from the compass, it, it really has, has conducted itself in uh, mean deviation of 0 to minus pi. As Vanita Ma'am was rightly saying, what is the mild to moderate glaucoma? Are we taking the visual fields into account rather than just the optic disc? That really matters. So what is the inclusion criteria that we have? This study by Grover et al. has taken minus 6.5 to minus 11. They have gone up to the extreme of minus 12. That is, they have slightly touched the severe glaucoma category as well. And they have given impressive results. So that is one thing that we need to really ponder over and think about it. And there are different groups, as I was telling with you. The most failed group was the, the pseudophagic group. For pseudophagic patients, almost half of them, it failed. And if you see that that really it really makes an impact. So we need to know which group we are dealing with. At the same time, the secondary open angle glaucoma patients tend to do better. Most of the times, the problem is associated only with the trabecular meshwork and the SOAG patients who we may not think will work out actually works out. So those things matter. And who did best get with uh, cataract surgery? They did best in POAG patients. That much I think is very important. And always a word of caution, as again, ma'am, tell. I'm just summarizing it. More serious the disease, they are more unlikely to get help from the angle procedure. So better to avoid this in a very serious disease. And the point nine is, again, the different subgroups. If you remove that pseudo fake PYAG group, 70 to 90 percentage of the patients did not need a new trabeculectomy or a tube after GAT. Again, this is just one study done by Grover et al., it has to go through an RCT with multicentric studies. And I think uh, Pondicherry Arvind is working on, uh, Swati Ma'am is working on that, and we'll be getting the results soon. So these things are very important. And last but not least, we need to have a good strategy. It starts from the direct gonioscopy that we do on the table and how we approach the patient. And I think Ma'am has really talked beautifully about this. Another two points that I just want to highlight is the post-op points where patient has to sleep on the same side as the surgery, uh, that really works well. And the reverse uh, uh, precision of uh, Trellenberg precision where the heart has to be uh, slightly above. So that point, it again really uh, matters due to lack of time. As ma'am told, we are not able to cover on the position of gonioscopy and the patient's thing. We have to really strategize in the right way. And that really helps us in success. Though it is very easy to say it's only $4.00. I think we all want to move forward. As I was telling, I'm currently undergoing my training with the Glaucos and I really want to implant my first tent in Trichy, uh, like uh, Ma'am and Amit who, who, who took pride in that. But to start off, we can start off only slow because that's where the economics factor lies. We don't really want to get ourselves very far ahead just by going with direct gonio and doing a procedure which is quite costly. So that's the only reason. And we also want to limit the healthcare system's economics. So before we really have more better data, the same thing applies for uh, uh, the bash as well, which I don't have my own video and I'll not play it because so many videos have been played and it also is quite promising. And uh, I think with more studies, we'll have, uh, this is one paper that been was presented in the Arvo journal, which is quite promising for uh, the bank, the bank also. So what's next? Yeah, we need to go for a prospective GAT study, which is still a long-term follow-up. And I think with that, with uh, Vanita Ma'am and others who are all taking the initiative, I think we'll have a good study with a long-term follow-up, which will always guide uh, yours like us to take initiative of uh, to transform from GAT into ISTEN, which I have started embracing. And I think uh, my fellows, others will also be embracing. So I think I'm joining hands with Amit on that one. But I want to insist that we should start with GAT, at least for the confidence per se. And uh, I would like to share my experience with 
the glocko second generation stent that i had my hands on this is my own fingerprint where i was lucky to put it on the uh, microscope and take uh, one particular photograph of hydrus as well so i was able to relate uh, relate with what ma'am was telling because i have touched an hydrus with my own own hands and i felt how it is and i have also touched uh, the the kahoots dual blade though i have not done it on a real patient so this is all very exciting stuff and i am uh, embracing everything what amit and uh, ma'am are saying and that's the way forward but we start with gat and i think we will evolve so thank you yoshi for once again this wonderful opportunity and this beautiful forum to uh, learn more i learned a lot from ma'am today and i'm very grateful for it thank you uh, vanita ma'am for all the enlightening talk today on mgs thank you thank you to both the debaters dr amit and dr prasanna both of them have actually made their points quite efficiently and both of them have quoted ma'am in both their cases as ma'am said as dr prasanna said and as ma'am said was what dr amit said so we would ask okay. ma'am her opinion about uh, gat versus i said because ma'am would be the one who can actually justify this thing. Nandini looks like uh, Prasanna has already given up. <laughs> no, no. Vanita, ma'am, you are muted. Up. Yeah, Vanita, ma'am, you are muted. <laughs> Vanita, ma'am, we can't hear you. You are muted. We are losing all the important comments from you. <laughs> yeah. See, I he Prasanna was handing over the debate to Amit. I would have given Amit a run for his money. <laughs> ma'am, why was not able to do that? Is currently. Uh, i am undergoing my training as we speak for uh, that gave it away man it doesn't have to be your <laughs> position started off with it. Dockers. It, you know you just have to fight you have to just go for it anyway what my yeah. my my whole position is that um, you know actually gat per se yes it's cheap yes only 4 dollars yes only 200 rupees but gat is is way more difficult to do than bang gat is 360 degrees trabeculotomy uh, cannulation and trabeculotomy and i think about 3 quadrants of it i would say is blind you're cannulating you're just proceeding pushing you know without knowing where it is so it is actually in a way a blind procedure compared to that bang is much 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 easier and you're doing it with a needle which only costs 2 rupees at least in hyderabad so um you know it is probably better to start with a bang rather than a gat i know that when you're influenced by the arvind group you talk about gat more more than bang but uh, i hope to change that for them also <laughs> anyway i have a point about gat and the reason i actually stopped have almost virtually abandoned that procedure there the the fact that uh, amit put forward that it is uh, you know uh, ripping apart 360 degree of the tre trabecular meshwork we don't know in these mild to moderate cases we don't know in future what kind of developments in terms of medication in terms of procedures in terms of devices we may we may get for these for you know targeting the trabecular meshwork so destroying something for the for the for its entirety is something which go actually goes against the principles of um, of you know any management you don't want to destroy unless absolutely essential and i believe in mild to moderates it's not essential that's my position second point we are talking about and if you noticed i don't know if you noticed or i don't know how much you guys are actually exposed to mix or not but i will tell you he has quoted one and only one author and that's davinder grover and his his mentor ronald felman okay why is that because the majority of the publications are theirs why is it that in the rest of the world it is not being replicated why are the same results not being replicated and in this i find a you know a deja vu kind of situation 
I don't know, you may, you guys may be too young to know that there was a time in the late 1990s to, you know, almost early 2000s when non-penetrating glaucoma surgery, deep sclerectomy, viscocanalostomy, all was being talked about just as the way MIGS is being talked about now. But why did it fall apart? The reason it fell apart was that there were only two groups, one in Switzerland by Andre Mahmoud and one in South Africa by uh, Ronald um, uh, Stegman, by Stegman. Only these two groups seem to have good results. The rest of the world did not. So, you know, there is something about the, the, uh, the fact that there is a steep learning curve and therefore cannot be replicated, you know, worldwide. Possibly that is that is a cause. And two, maybe because there are so many more procedures now, so many more cost-effective procedures now, that we may not feel the need to do that anymore, to do to do a GAT. And like I said, I started, I started doing GAT and I found it A, it wasn't easy. B, I uh you know, center for sight is private practice. It's not institutional practice. When I'm um, counseling a patient for a procedure, I am telling them it's minimally invasive. Yet, I am making them go through so many inhibitions. Don't sleep on. Uh, don't sleep on the other side. Sleep on the side of the surgery. Do this. Do that. And day after surgery, because of the high fever, the vision is not good at all. There is no wow factor. So I'm telling them it's safe, but they are not feeling it's safe. They are feeling the vision is not improving. You think about it from various aspects. Plus, because the amount of layered hyphema is fairly high, the, uh, um, the risk of an AC washout in the first week is also fairly high. So a minimally invasive glaucoma surgery and I'm having to go back in, how do you counsel the patient for that? So these are the various reasons why, you know, I, I felt I have better procedures in my hand. I would rather do those. It takes less time, like Amit says. Absolutely. An eye stent, you have the patient in position. It does not even take half a minute to position it. It's as simple as that. It's as easy as that. So it's the patient positioning that takes a little time. It's the microscope positioning. It's the higher magnification. All that takes time, maybe five minutes, not more than that. But the actual implantation is only, and uh, you know, half a minute. But I would say one thing that um, so far, insurance companies, if you bill it as MIGS, they are reimbursing in total. So at the moment, cost is not an issue, believe me. Of course, when you're talking about uh, advanced glaucoma, is it not in all of our experience that advanced glaucoma happens in the lower socioeconomic strata? There, these procedures are not suitable anyway. Why would you even consider? So TRAB is not being threatened here. You know, the problem here, here, the mindset is that TRAB is being threatened. TRAB is not being threatened. I still do TRABs. I don't want to, but I still do TRABs because I have those kind of patients who are only suitable for TRABs. I still do tubes. I have to do tubes. I do primary tubes in secondary glaucomas. I don't do TRABs in secondary glaucoma. Very rarely do I do TRABs in secondary glaucoma. So, you know, each one has their indication. Each one you will find the place. And if you are talking about cost, like I said in my talk, and so did Amit, you know, we wouldn't have trifocus. We wouldn't have fem femtocataract. We wouldn't have, you know, cardiac stents. Nobody would do a stent. Everyone would do a bypass, bypass surgery. You know, that's right now, cardiac stents have been brought under price control. I'm sure, you know, with increased use of, you know, Ocular stents. I don't know. I'm not saying this is the final version of uh, mixed surgery that we are going to use. This space is ever evolving. And maybe five years, 10 years from now, if you still invite me in Yossi and I'd love to come, I love to be surrounded by young people. I might be, I might, you know, be singing a Price control, ma'am. Blockers would also leave India now. 
if you talk about price control blockers will also leave no, no, they they wouldn't they wouldn't see the moment the demand picks up the numbers pick up so the price does not matter so much think about the mobile phone i mean that's the commonest example when it first came out all you could do is what ting 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 only phone what how much more you are doing now yeah, that used to call for, cost 40 50 000 at that time you know 50 no i think 20 25 years ago on iphones now that same dabba phone costs only 1000 rupees if you just want to make a phone call it's only 1000 rupees so it's all a matter of demand and supply the need for it we have to create we have to create awareness amongst our our patients don't have that uh, i mean how many patients know about glaucoma when they first come to you let's be honest about that not many know you have to educate them about the disease isn't it so just as you educate them about the disease you educate them about the procedures that are available should they go for cataract surgery i mean i talk about these things only when i do when i'm considering cataract surgery sorry amit i'm i mean interrupting you no, no, you are absolutely uh, uh, right ma'am that's what i was also saying ke once we do uh, i think the number of migs uh, more than the number of traps uh, that would also uh, increase the awareness of glaucoma and glaucoma management in the public which again is a very big issue right now Because yeah. many of the patients, they feel they know they they hear that there is no treatment for glaucoma, there is no surgery for glaucoma. And once these numbers increase and the safety uh, is reassured to the patient, they see uh, from their own uh, eyes that yeah, these are safe glaucoma surgeries. I think the awareness of glaucoma and glaucoma management would also increase tem- tremendously. And I totally agree with you. Even uh, now, uh, I give the option of eye stent or bang to the patient. I don't give now the option of GAD. I have also stopped doing. I just did uh, four GADs and then I stopped doing it. Don't tell anyone I told you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I never asked him to stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Prasanna, do you want to comment anything here? ट understands yeah it's an implant that goes in it's a stent that goes in it will work for longer as compared to manually opening opening up the trabecular meshwork right so uh, i i tell the patient we have both the options if your insurance is getting covered or you are willing to pay we can do the eye stent it's a better option or else we have the manual surgery as well so the moment you say eye stent is a better option believe me whether their insurance pays or not they will tell me i will give the cash you go ahead you know the ones who have had cardiac stents they are the ones who understand stents much better true i have quite a few such patients <laughs> anyway yes prasanna last word to ma'am. you <laughs> ma'am yeah thank you it was very enlightening ma'am to see your talk for me the main challenge i would say ma'am uh, you are right when we do counsel them they agree but on the flip side uh i feel the patients also have a mental calculation regarding their insurance money uh, correct me if i'm wrong ma'am like they have their own way of allocating their money maybe if it had been a flag surgery they do agree to an extent but for this prioritizing when we give them like a method of choice it's not up to them prasanna yeah like basically right now because there is no diktat in the insurance world ird or whatever they call it mm-hmm. at, at the moment if you just bill it as a mix procedure mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yes ma'am i do I, okay in the sense the you the don't have to name i stand or whatever okay. you just okay. call it migs okay okay migs Okay, it is being covered. Uh, yeah, I yeah. I, I, I do, I do know that, ma'am. But for converting them into that, is it, is it a really easy process, or is it quite difficult? Yes. Difficult. My actually, the the lady uh, at CFS Hyderabad who mans the insurance mm-hmm. desk, she's really good. 
good okay okay it's really good and actually i think glaucus is using her help mm-hmm. to to educate insurance <laughs> people mm-hmm. in, in you know in different uh, different yeah. hospitals ma'am uh, for me the so yeah. prasanna you don't tell uh, others that ma'am has told you that instead of i said you can just write an igs <laughs> no no i <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that's on a, on a funny note yeah but that's a really important point i again learned from ma'am today i uh, i mean ma'am uh, i was talking all your publications in, on a regular note but today i went overboard and uh, as uh, i just quoted in my talk also i didn't know cowd's blade was uh, as cross the regulatory path because yes, in your yes. in your carla yeah, journal which, uh, actually, you published when yeah. we were in aioc in mumbai that's when they got it got it okay so in your article i just when i, I just changed my slide actually yeah, that was that was yeah. uh, you know published a while ago yeah 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 that, but it was this year and the other one uh, for me personally i i still do feel we have to start with uh, gat ma'am because uh, uh, the confidence of a direct gonioscopy it matters but again uh, maybe uh, going in an economical way i think amit has gone that way i think you have gone that way so i am just following your footsteps uh, to be honest uh, without gat we don't get the confidence to transform into uh, uh, i stand is what at least in uh, in my setting i would really say because the only way is the money factor which is involved in uh, uh, going forward maybe in gat or with the bank we we as you told maybe with the sinski we go we can go and touch the tabacula yeah. mature see yeah. what we are what we are dealing in a very like yeah, yeah in a lower economic way and then we take things forward uh, you yeah you do that in your routine cataract cases you know? uh, yeah set aside one or two cases at the end yeah. of the day so that your you know your work does not suffer and yeah. you know just position the patient start with one two patients then then you know keep increasing keep getting mm. confident with your positioning with your you know positioning is very important very important and, and even the chamber stability ma'am sometimes uh, the interface uh, issues and the chamber stability where though now we are the so hemolytic level is well as i have uh, been through a lot of migs mm. and it's only with the uh, glaucas when i was doing it yes that ma'am. i discovered a uh, 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 a viscoelastic which is sodium hyaluronate 1.4% called mm-hmm. bio hyular mm-hmm. uh, hyaluron not hyaluron hyaluron is care group this is biotech group from gujarat okay. actually it is the best the mm-hmm. best mm-hmm. not expensive not expensive only 400 rupees you know considering mm-hmm. uh, all the others which are 800 and of course helon gv and all that uh, mm-hmm. way beyond Uh, the you know this is this is really good i use it for my ecps i use it for my uh, bangs and i use it for my eye stent so i use it for uh, all across board now bio hyalur or hyalur something one of the two <laughs> can't remember the exact name now but i'm using that now so i think nandini we had a great great session and good interaction or uh, would you like to give word of thanks Yeah, I'm sure he wants to comment anything. Yeah, I am sure the debate could have gone on, and we could have still had a longer thing. But then, because of the time constraint, we'll have to uh, stop today's session. But uh, anything else that any uh, ma'am or Dr. Amit or Dr. Prasanna would want to add? We'll allow Arthi to proceed forward. Right. I I will just <laughs> I I would just encourage everyone. to at least consider you know you you guys are young you are dynamic you 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 know change is is something that is comes second nature to you guys you know when you get to the senior positions as, as we are finding you know the senior senior glaucoma specialists are dismissing you know mix mm-hmm. even without trying it so mm-hmm. if that we we we, sh- we should be able to change that we should change that yeah. and i'm not saying start, start with i stent i'm not at all stay, saying start with i stent i'm saying start with bang start with mm-hmm. bang <laughs> yeah. yeah i think counseling uh, uh, the point that uh, dr prasanna came up with ki counseling of the patient is it difficult 
it would be much easier if you start believing that yeah you are doing the right thing and you are, yeah. you are doing a uh your yeah, accident is the way to go ahead if and you patient, hold yourself back just thinking oh this patient can't afford forget in front of you your patient you think this is the best procedure you say it if they say no can't get it done then you think of alternatives it's not that the alternatives are not there don't don't be judgmental this is this is my point now if you are they're obviously from a low socio economic strata that's a different matter if it's advanced glaucoma that's a different matter but if it's not if it's fitting your bill of or for mix then i i would go for mix yeah okay yeah. i think thank you ma'am <laughs> yeah so uh, i would thank ma'am for such an enlightening talk and dr amit and dr prasanna for such a wonderful debate so uh, arti would you just announce the next session before yes. we close for today yeah so uh, last but not the least we would like to thank our audience and uh, team clernet as well uh, for this wonderful session so our next session uh, will be on 28th of september and we plan to have it on pediatric uh, ophthalmology so we will give the details very soon so that you can share your cases and then we can include you in the session so uh, once again thank you everyone and uh, good night thank you yoshi thank you ma'am thanks thank for you ma'am yes thank you bye bye ma'am thank you so much for uh, being hey. with us and sorry for the delay oh uh, no problem at all it was I'm my pleasure entirely close for the day can we have a group picture sure sure yeah. so uh, some of the uh, audience is also with us so dr shaina you asked very nice questions you can also switch on your camera and i probably gone Ready? With the V. Okay, with the V. <laughs> This is Yo. Ah, <laughs> Yo, yes. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Bye, 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 Doctor Mit. Bye, bye. Yeah, yeah. Bye, Prasanna. Yeah. Prasanna is still not ready to accept. I said he will continue. No, no. He, no, yeah. I am. I am. Yeah, One more week after, I will be supporting for I stand. I will. Yeah, Amit, yeah. see before, ma'am. Really, what happened was before I could type, Amit typed. I'll take I stand. So otherwise, I also, oh. I also, I also tried my you best. You were not to, fast enough. <laughs> I I tried my best to not change my picture from I stand. Uh, Arti was behind me to please change your side to uh, uh, get. I told it's okay. I, I left it to you. It was Amit who wanted it to be reversed. I said whatever you want. You have. That that itself we should have understood the conflict of interest. <laughs> you started the debate there only, Prasanna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, dear all. Uh, we will we'll all look forward for more. Great being here. Thank you so much for the invitation, guys. I hope you have enjoyed the session. I love. it i told you i like to be with young people <laughs> okay bye 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 dr nandini bye 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 bye